in the third part of this talk, uh, Hafen will take over and he will introduce something related to uh, automated deep learning and the mainly about the tools we want to use for deep learning and automated deep learning. I'm going to introduce not only auto cameras, but also the full uh, technical stack that would we build this AutoML system upon. So the lowest layer, like uh, the most infrastructure library we are using is TensorFlow. So let's start uh, some basic introductions. TensorFlow is uh, mainly a library that is capable of uh, doing various tensor manipulations. So as you can see in this example code, um, we initialized the two matrices, A and B. They're both two by two matrices. And we can do a plus, a square, or exponential of them. Like all these operations, you can do uh, almost uh, every uh, commonly used operation with matrices you can do with uh, TensorFlow. And besides these uh, matrix operations, you can also do some uh, automated differentiation. For example, again, we have A and B two by two matrices. And uh, with uh, gradient tape, which is something we use to record all the gradients of uh, different matrix operations. So for example, we calculate C as the square root of uh, the plus of uh, square A and square B. So this is a matrix operation. We get, get the value of C. And now we want to calculate the gradient of C with respect to A. Then we can simply use table of gradient, and then we directly get the gradient. So TensorFlow is not only for matrix operations, but also automatic differentiations of all the operations. Besides uh, doing all these matrix this operations, it also is capable of uh, deploying your model in various environments. For example, you develop a machine learning model in TensorFlow and you fully tested it, it's working fine, and you want to use it for real-time inferences for your web services. For example, you can deploy it on servers to use it as the back end of your website and to do real-time inferences for like uh, REST APIs, build an API services upon the deployment of uh, these machine learning models on the servers. And you can also do uh, these machine learning models on the edge devices, like your mobile phone or uh, some uh, single chip devices embedded systems with uh, TensorFlow Lite. And you can also purely do a web-based application, like uh, uh, every, all the computations is in the web browser on the client side with some uh, JavaScript. So you can convert any TensorFlow models into a TensorFlow.js model that deploy and do all the computations on the clients. The next uh, library we're going to introduce is Keras. So it is a simplified API for TensorFlow. So it will increase your productivity for implementing some deep learning models. Uh, with TensorFlow, you have to write all the basic like matrix uh, operations by yourself. Of course, for a, a very uh, complicated model, you don't want to do everything from the very basic operations, primitive operations, but you want to use some better enclosed, better encapsulated uh, layers. For example, in this code example, you can see we are building a very simple uh, two-layer, like multi-layer perceptrons. So the first line we have um, initialized the sequential model and we add the layers to this model one by one. The first one is we, we add uh, a dense layer, a fully connect layer with uh, 32 neurons in it. And we also specify the activation functions and the same for the second one. With the compile function, we can easily specify the loss function for this model. And with the fit function, we can train it with the specified number of uh, epochs, which is 20. And after the training, you can easily do predictions with this model. So as you can see, we are uh, encapsulating the uh, model building and the training process with uh, this Keras library. And the logic behind designing this Keras API is like we want to, the user to only learn what they need. So they don't need to learn everything up front. For example, for a very simple model we just showed, you only need to learn the sequential API and basic model.fit function. But for additional functions, you can use some callback functions, like you want to do early stopping of the training, you want to 
save the model as you train it, and, and you can do all the callbacks. And um, you can also do more advanced things like uh, generative uh, adversarial networks and curriculum learning by customize your layers, metrics, and losses, also by subclassing some of the uh, pre defined classes, base classes in Keras. And you are also capable to do anything that is supported by TensorFlow with uh, gradient tape and customize the training loops. Here's a typical workflow of a machine learning engineer. So the first step is to train a model. Of course, you, you need to define a model and train a model with the training data, and then try to evaluate the model with some uh, validation data and to see whether the model is performing good or bad. After the, this feedback, the machine learning engineer need to think what hyperparameters need to be changed in order to make the model perform even better. So the hyperparameter can be the number of layers or the number of units or the learning rate. So after uh, the machine learning engineer changed these hyperparameters, he or she need to train the model again and evaluate the model again and go in this loop for multiple times in order to tune for a good model. These TDS manual work should be automated. So that's why we are developing an automated hyperparameter tuning library named the uh, Keras Tuner to help you finish this work. So it is an automated hyperparameter tuning library for Keras. So using it as, as simple as implementing a Keras model. So here you can see again, we still want to implement a Keras model with two layers two dense layers. And for example, there's a 32, which is a hyperparameter you want to tune. You want to tune a number of uh, neurons in the first layer. And you, you can simply change that 32 into this state. Define it as a integer time and to give it a name like units. And you define the lower bound or upper bound, which is 32 and uh, 512. And you define 32 as the step. You're going through this range to try different values of uh, this units. So by this statement, we're actually defining the search space for this model. So a Keras tumor, when, when it sees this um, statement, will try different values for building your model. And uh, to start the search, you can initialize a tumor. Uh, here we use random search, but there are also other algorithms implemented in a Keras tumor, like uh, some very a popular uh, automated machine learning algorithm like uh, Bayesian optimization or hyperband. And um, you can simply call tuner.search with uh, training data in number of epochs. And remember to specify the validation data you want to use the evaluate model. And with these things, you can just uh, automate all these, uh, uh, that training loop, that uh, hyperband or tuning loop we just showed. And the search function actually support all the uh, arguments that supported by the Keras fit function. Yeah, so so it automates this loop. As you can see, you, you, you only need to define the search space and hyperparameters, then start a search, it will go this loop automatically. We all know that uh, AI is the new electricity. We all say this today, but using uh, AI is far from uh, using electricity. So today, if your phone battery is dead, you simply plug it into the wall. So that says how we are using electricity. But if you want to use machine learning, you have to go through a, a number of tutorials, a number of curriculums, and read a lot of books in order to learn machine learning theories and learn to use how to use those libraries. So that's why we are developing a library named AutoCaris. It is an AutoML library for deep learning. So let's see a simple example, a simple code example for uh, AutoCaris. So implementing a um, machine learning model without Keras can be as simple as three lines of code. You simply initialize an image classifier. For example, you want to do image classification. And then you pass the training data, X train and Y train, which are images and their corresponding labels to the auto model. And then we call a fifth function with it. And so it will start the loop of searching all the possible models. So and then you can do a prediction using the best model found during the fit. So compare with uh, Keras Tumor. In AutoCaris, we are defining all the commonly used models in the search space already in the library for you. 
instead of uh, for you to des design all the search arrays yourself with Keras Tumor. All the Keras Tumor arguments in the initializers are also supported in the like all the APIs of uh, Auto Keras. For example, Image Classifier they support all the Keras Tumor arguments in the initializers, and all the Keras arguments for the fit function in predict function. So these two functions also exist in the Keras models. Those arguments supported by Keras also are sp supported by Auto Keras. You can have a smooth transition if you already know how to use Keras. And uh, uh, you can also, after the search, you can also export the best model uh, by calling that export model function to export the best model found as a Keras model. And all, all the, like, uh, Keras model support like uh, deployment with TensorFlow in various environments. You can directly use them to deploy your model, and you can also uh, save the model as we show here. Uh, use model.save with the path. And uh, yeah, next slide, please. Another type of uh, API we're having for the task APIs, we're supporting six tasks in total, uh, mainly uh, three uh, data types, images, text like natural languages and uh, the structure data, also called tabular data, is something you can put into a CSV file or, or a spreadsheet. And uh, for these data, we can do classification and regression. But uh, in the real world, uh, the tasks are usually not as simple as um, single classification or regression with a single type of data. So usually we, we are dealing with uh, multi-model data and uh, multi-task data. So for example, the data looks like an image and the structure data mixed together. For example, the image can be a photo of a house and the structure can be some attributes of that house. For example, the total area, the, the address, the longitude, latitude of the location of the house. And uh, with all these informations, we, we want to predict the housing price as a regression problem. And we also want to Plus, uh, do a classification problem of uh, how many people should uh, live in this house. So this is a uh, multi-model data with uh, for for multi-task. To deal with this, we also have a special design API for such use cases, which is the auto model API. Uh, you can just uh, put all the different type of the input in the list as the, and pass it to the input argument. For example, here we have AK dot image input, AK dot structure data input. And we specify two type of input, and um, for the output, we can just specify two tasks: in regression hat and classification hat. Then we call the fit function with the corresponding data, like images and structure data, and regression target and classification target. So notably, in the regression hat, we can also specify some metrics, like uh, the MAE as the metrics. You will see that metrics as an evaluation metric during the training and during the evaluation function, if you call it. And for some advanced users, they already know what their model looks like. So again, it's the same problem with the image data and structure data. We want to do regression and classification, but now we are how, but we already know roughly like what the search space should look like. We already know we want to use ResNet together with the exception net for the images and merge the output together. And we only want to use fully connect layers or dense layers for a structured data and merge the output together with the image output and then do a regression and classification based on this output. So if we already know that search space uh, looks like this, we also have a specialized design API just to implement this search space for such users. This API looks exactly the same as the uh, Keras function API. Um, you can specify the input and uh, you will get an input tensor. Uh, we name it image inputs here. And, and then we can pass these inputs to uh, different layers like, like uh, ResNet block. Uh, that block also has some uh, inner hyperparameters. If you don't know uh, what to use for those hyperparameters, you can just leave them uh, blank. But uh, if you already know, for example, you want to use the second version of the ResNet block, you can just specify version you go to v2. Then we will only search the version two uh, rest not at uh, architecture for you. And uh, after you connect the all the things to build a graph, then you can call 
the auto model. The next slide, please. Uh, you can call the auto model API to put everything together. So we, we've uh, introduced uh, the whole tech stack, technical stack that we built this uh, library upon. So for pure machine learning, you can want to do everything manually. You can start with TensorFlow. And you want to use something better encapsulated to uh, improve your productivity for implementing a model and training a model, you can use Keras. But you can, if you want to further automate the entire process, for example, the hyperrender searching loop, you can use Keras Tuner. But if you don't want to even just define the search space, uh, you can use AutoCaris with all the predefined model uh, libraries with a very simplified uh, API, like to leave everything uh, to the auto ML algorithm to search it for you.